A Touch of Greek, Out of Olympus, written by Tina Folsom, narrated by Eric G. Dove. Chapter 28 Sophia looked at the tall, dark figure approaching her. Yes, I'm Miss Baker. The man moved closer, his booted feet grinding against the dust on the wooden floor. This had better not be another salesman trying to convince her she needed an expensive marketing brochure or a fancy sign out front. Right now she couldn't deal with it when all she could think of was whether she was going crazy. She had panicked in the shower, yes, but after she'd been unable to turn off the hot water. And now they all made it sound like she was hysterical, like she'd made it all up. Even Triton. Not even he believed her now. The agency sent me. The man's words didn't register at first. What agency? Had she forgotten yet another appointment? Executive Home Health Care. I'm here to stop my assignment. He elaborated. Sophia shook her head. There must be a mistake. Why don't you let me handle this? Triton's voice came from the stairs. She looked into his direction, seeing his silhouette approach. You look tired. I'll bring you something to eat and drink in the garden. But Sophia wasn't in the mood to listen to him right now. Sitting in the garden wouldn't calm her mind. It's all right, Triton. I can handle this. Her words came out sharper than she'd intended. She knew he didn't deserve it, but she couldn't stop herself from reacting this way. He'd given in to the plumber's assessment without protesting, without supporting her. At least that's what it felt like to her. What does the agency want? As you can see, they already sent somebody last week. She pointed toward Triton. Or had Triton asked for a transfer? As soon as the thought crossed her mind, she felt an uncomfortable stab in her chest. Was he leaving her? He'd gotten up early this morning. What if he'd called the agency to terminate his employment with her? Last week? The man asked, his voice colored with confusion. But we only got the call from you yesterday afternoon. No, I'm sorry, but I'm sure somebody at your office must have mixed this up. I was released from the hospital a week ago, and the agency sent Triton a day later. Miss Baker, that's impossible. We got the call yesterday, and... I would know if I called the agency yesterday, believe me. But, the man started again. As you can see, there must have been some misunderstanding at the office, Triton interrupted. Sophia nodded. I'm sorry that they inconvenienced you, but I... On which date were you released from the hospital, Miss Baker? The terse voice of the man interrupted. She let out an exasperated breath. Fine, she'd humor him for another minute. On the 29th. Miss Baker, today is the 30th, so you came home yesterday, and you requested a health care worker for today. I don't know who you are, but today is not the 30th, today is the 6th, she replied. What? The man's voice was a gasp. Clearly you're a week late. So would you please leave? Triton added. There was a short pause before the man replied, pointing at Triton. Miss Baker, may I ask, who's this guy who claims to be your home health care worker? I sure have never seen him at the agency, and trust me, I know everybody there. Sophia's heart stopped. A moment later, she fought for air. This couldn't be happening. Sophia, clearly this man is a fraud. Let's get him out of here. Triton put his hand on her arm. I'm no fraud. Here, here's my ID. She saw him shove a piece of paper toward her. She had to know what it said. Charlie, where are you? She called out. He appeared moments later. What can I do? Charlie asked. Would you please tell me what this man's ID says? Jonathan Matthews, certified home health care provider, and then some dates in the company name, Executive Home Health Care. Thanks, Charlie. That'll be all. She braced herself against the wall and looked in Triton's direction. Mr. Matthews, are you sure this man doesn't work for Executive Home Health Care? She almost choked at her words. I'm sure. Sophia, I can explain, Triton said as he placed his hand on her arm. She shook it off. He'd lied to her. He wasn't who he'd said he was. Michael's words came back to her. Had her cousin been right for once? Who are you? She stepped away from him. He'd come to her home, a stranger, and not only had she let him into her house, she'd let him into her bed, and she knew nothing about him. What did he want? What evil scheme had he planned? Please, we need to talk, alone, just you and me, 
I can explain everything. Alone? How stupid do you think I am? Why would I be so crazy as to agree to be alone with you? She tried to push back the memory of their intimacies the night before. He knew when he saw a good thing, he'd said then. It was so obvious now what he'd meant by that. What are you? Some con artist who scams lonely and vulnerable women? Makes them trust you so you can fleece them? Which didn't make him one iota better than Michael. No, Sophia, no. I never had any intention of hurting you, Triton claimed, his voice just as agitated as hers. Well, at least he was a good actor, because acting was all this was. And she'd been so stupid. And this time it hadn't even been a pretty face, for Triton was still faceless to her, just a silhouette whose facial features she couldn't discern. And right now she was thankful for it. At least she would have no memory of his face. Maybe it would make it easier to forget him. Get out! Get out now and take your friends with you, she yelled, knowing her tears weren't far behind. I need you and you need me. No, I don't need somebody like you, a liar and a cheat, and for all I know, a psychopath. You'd better leave now before I call the police and have them arrest you. Please, don't do this. Give me a chance to explain. Triton stepped closer, but Sophia backed away. Here's your chance. Explain it now, right here. Not in front of other people. Ha, I knew it. You think you can sweet-talk me when we're alone. How naive do you think I am? I might be slow in catching on to you, but I'm there now, and I don't make the same mistake twice. Well, sometimes she did, but she swore that this time she wouldn't. No, this time she knew this would turn out really bad. I'm leaving now, but believe me, I'll be back when you're ready to talk. Don't threaten me. Sophia gripped the banister for support, her knees close to buckling. It's not a threat, it's a promise. I will come back, and you will listen to what I have to say to you, alone. With those words, Triton turned and dashed down the stairs. A few seconds later, the entrance door slammed. Sophia's knees weakened and she would have fallen, had the healthcare worker not grabbed her and supported her. I really can't say enough how sorry I am, Miss Baker, but I have no idea what happened. I don't understand how I could have lost an entire week without any memory of it. Something is seriously wrong here. And considering that this man you called Triton was able to infiltrate here and pretend to be me, I think we should talk to the agency and report this to the police. I don't do drugs. There's no way I could have just had a blackout for an entire week. Mr. Matthews. Jonathan, he corrected her. Jonathan, I don't know what happened, but I don't want to deal with the police right now. Can you understand that? All she wanted was to forget, not to be reminded of how Triton had lulled her in. He nodded. I understand, but we'll get to the bottom of this. I have to know what happened during that week. In the meantime, why don't I get you a coffee and you sit down for a moment? Triton looked up at the clouds. The sky looked ominous, and he could already smell the scent of rain in the air. Soon it would come pouring down. The wind had already taken up speed and whipped the trees framing the cobblestone street. Dionysus was in for a tongue lashing as soon as Triton found his sorry ass. What had gotten into him, letting the healthcare worker out of his clutches so prematurely, just when everything had started falling into place? Since it was daytime, Triton dispensed with searching for Dionysus in his usual drinking establishments and went straight to the studio where his friend had let him crash during those first few weeks in Charleston. Apparently Dionysus kept bachelor pads in many earthly cities for convenience. Figured that a simple palace on Olympus wasn't enough for the drunkard and philanderer. Triton jerked the door to Dionysus' apartment open, nearly lifting it out of its hinges. At least he still had his physical power, which would come in handy when he decked Dionysus with his fists. You drunken, no good, unreliable son of a god! Triton halted his tirade when he spotted Dionysus lying on the floor of the living room, bloodied and beaten. Shit! Triton crouched down next to his friend. He didn't have to feel for a pulse. Dionysus was immortal, and while he could feel pain and be injured, he couldn't die. At least this one fact was for certain. Triton slid his arms underneath his friend's limp body and lifted him off the floor. As he carried him to his bed, he felt him stir. By the time he carefully laid him on top of the covers, Dionysus forced one eye open. The other one remained shut, 
too swollen and blood-soaked to allow any movement. Thank the gods. It's you, he pressed out, his voice hoarse and feeble. Don't talk, Triton ordered. He walked into the bathroom and took a towel, soaking it in lukewarm water before he returned to Dionysus. As he sat down on the edge of the bed and started cleaning off the encrusted blood from his friend's face, he glanced at the rest of his beaten body. His clothes were torn in places, blood-stained in others. His fists were as bloodied as his face, confirming that he'd fought with somebody and landed some vicious blows. Triton cursed under his breath. Why did Dionysus always have to get into bar fights? What was the allure? Did he really have to prove that he was a superior fighter? Triton guessed that most likely somebody had inadvertently insulted him, and the sensitive god of wine needed to defend his honor. Of course, he'd never admit to anybody that a wrong word could hurt him as easily as a well-placed fist, too proud for his own good. By the time Triton had wrung out the bloody towel a third time, Dionysus's wounds were clean. They'd already started closing and mending, but it would take hours until he was as good as new. Dionysus blinked one eye open. I didn't see them coming. You trying to tell me you didn't start another bar fight? Triton raised one doubting eyebrow. I swear by the goddess Artemis, I was attacked. Dionysus tried to raise himself to a sitting position and winced. His hand went to his ribs, which appeared to be bruised. I should call Escalapius to heal me. This hurts. Triton waved him off. A little bit of pain would do him good. There was no need to call the god of healers to fix a few bruises. There's no time. If you hadn't gotten drunk and let yourself be beaten up, that healthcare worker wouldn't have gotten away from you. Ah, shit, Dionysus cursed. He raised his head and looked straight at Triton, regret evident in his regard. What happened? That's what I'm asking you, Triton retorted and stood. He showed up at the house this morning and blew my cover. Listen, Triton, you have to believe me. This was no bar fight. Three guys went for me. They came out of nowhere. I'd never seen them before. This wasn't a regular fight. They knew my weak spot. They knew. The sincerity in Dionysus's voice and eyes gave Triton pause. Had somebody targeted him because he was hiding the healthcare worker? Are you sure? Dionysus nodded, and Triton noticed how the movement seemed to hurt his head. Somebody told them how to take me out. Only another god would have known. Triton nodded. Each god had at least one weak spot. If targeted, it was fairly easy for a mortal to take out a strong god like Dionysus. The mortal only needed to know where the spot was hidden, and only another god would know where those weak points were. Did you sense one of the gods nearby? If another god had been in the vicinity, Dionysus would have picked it up. Like recognizing like. Unfortunately, Triton couldn't sense any of his friend's aura the way he would have been able to if he'd had his powers. No. Whoever directed those thugs stayed far enough away while I was still conscious, so I couldn't sense him. Even though I have an idea or two who might be behind this. Especially if the person was trying to get at you, rather than just have his fun by beating me up. And there'd be any number of gods who'd love to beat Dionysus up. But his friend was right. This had to do with Triton and his quest. I shouldn't have gotten you involved, Triton said, ready to apologize to his friend. It was an entirely new feeling. He'd never in his life apologized for anything. Too late. Now it's personal. Nobody sends a bunch of hoodlums after me and gets away with it. Trust me, I'll get whoever's behind this. Triton nodded. He had his own suspicion about who wasn't keen on him meeting Zeus's challenge. Orion. He and Dionysus uttered the culprit's name on the same breath. Can't choose family, Triton confirmed. But you can choose your friends. Triton patted Dionysus on the shoulder, making him cringe in pain. Sorry. So tell me what's going on. How is your seduction of that blind woman going? Seduction? Triton grunted, not sure who was seducing whom. He was totally smitten with Sophia, and the thought that she hated him right now made his chest constrict painfully. 
She's got me in the palm of her hand. And right now, she thinks I'm a psychopath. Dionysus laughed. Well, if that's all, I'm sure we can fix that. <laughs>